Today on Animal Outtakes, the stillest, quietest people keep the manatees around us. We're going underwater to learn all about manatees and what makes these animals so special. People are just fascinated by these animals. Hello and welcome to Animal Outtakes. Manatees are such gentle creatures. These mermaids of the sea can be found swimming in the waters all around Florida. Today, we're getting up close to learn more about these animals. Let's dive in. On a cool morning in Crystal Springs, Florida, we find ourselves donning wetsuits, riding in a boat, ready for adventure. What we're gonna do out here today is we call this Swim with the Manatees. We're gonna swim from point A to point B. And how are we gonna swim? Quietly, very quietly. Everybody's gonna have a noodle under their arms. We're gonna use just our arms to move around. Boat captain Donna Apple has spent the last nine years introducing people to one of her favorite animals, the manatee. It's my biggest tip I give people every day. The stillest, quietest people keep the manatees around them. It's that simple, okay? So once we get near a manatee, we stop and we look. We stay as still as we can. Kings Bay, which is part of Crystal River, is the only place in Florida where you can swim with manatees. The majority of the bay is classified as a manatee refuge, created by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. In a manatee refuge, some activities are restricted to prevent any harm to the manatees. However, there are some areas that are more restricted. These are national manatee sanctuaries. These areas bar human entry and all activities during winter months in order to give manatees a haven. It's not long before we find a good spot to dive in. This is House Spring. We're going to go through that little area where you see that garage there. It is crystal clear in there as long as everybody keeps their feet off the bottom. House Spring, where we are, is part of the manatee refuge but is one of the three areas that can be closed off at the discretion of the refuge's manager. The manatee is Florida's state marine mammal. These large, slow-moving creatures can be found in shallow waters around Florida, from rivers to saltwater bays, canals, and coastal areas. Pretty much anywhere you can find seagrass beds or freshwater vegetation. These herbivores consume between 10 and 15% of their body weight and vegetation each day. And with the average male weighing between 800 and 1,200 pounds, that's a lot of food. Once in the water, it was a short swim before we made it to the spring. Once through the murky water of the canal, the water clears and we stumble upon our first manatee. We see two manatees at first. This one, a juvenile, is foraging for food beneath an old boat dock. The second is resting on the spring's floor. Manatees are mammals and need air to survive. They surface every three to five minutes to take a breath. But when they are resting like this, they have been known to stay underwater for up to 20 minutes. Manatees also need fresh water to survive, which is one reason they enjoy spending time in these springs. Um, when the springs are bubbling out of the water, they're actually drinking? Absolutely, that yep. They come straight out? They do, yeah. they drink water, you know, even on their journeys, like I said earlier, they need fresh water every three to four days, not every day. So everybody says, well, how come they can survive in the Gulf? Because they only need that fresh water every three to four days. They have all the rivers memorized, they tuck into them, they drink they come back out and continue on their journey. Like Donna said, manatees migrate. They have been spotted as far north as Massachusetts and Texas to the west during the summertime months when the water is warmer. During the winter, they're found mostly around Florida, skirting in and out of rivers and estuaries. Last aerial count right here in Crystal River was over 600 manatees. Wow. That's from the Gulf all the way into here. Right, which is about eight miles. Yeah, approximately. Okay. And then come summer, we're down to 
19 to 40. Wow. So that really puts things in perspective. And a lot of people want to know why do they leave? Real simple, food source. Food source. The weeds do not grow here in the wintertime, just like your lawn doesn't. Right. Therefore, the food source gets depleted, becomes quite scarce. They have to leave to get enough food. So in other words, there's not enough food to sustain the population right. through the summer. And they appreciate the warmer waters. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they're not gonna go in the springs in the summer. Right. There's no joy there. What is a manatee anyway? While these marine mammals may resemble seals, they're actually more closely related to the elephant. They have two forelimbs or flippers on their large gray bodies and a large flat paddle-like tail. They have small eyes, wrinkled faces, and a prehensile snout surrounded by whiskers. The Florida manatee is a subspecies to the West Indian manatee, one of the four different species of manatee. The manatee can grow to be 10 feet long, weigh between 8 to 1200 pounds, and live to be 60 years old. Another reason the springs in Kings Bay are so popular with manatees is because they're warm. The water remains at 72 degrees year round, which may not sound warm to us, but for manatees, it's practically perfect and vital to survival. A little further south, just off of Tampa Bay, there's another haven for manatees. Jamie, we're right here outside of Tampa in Apollo Beach, and there are beautiful manatees here. Why do they come here? Manatees come into the canal because of the warm water. Um, the electric utility um, actually uses cold water to help produce uh, steam, uh, steam to produce electricity, and then we take the warm water and put it back into the discharge canal, and manatees need warm water. Anything below 68 degrees, they need to search for warm water because they can become sick. So that's why they come here. We get hundreds of them. Jamie Woodley has spent the last 15 years working at Tampa Electric's Manatee Viewing Center. We have experienced some colder weather, typical winter weather for Florida. Do you see an influx then of the manatees coming oh, in? Definitely. The first month and a half we had such warm weather we only had a few manatees in here, but as soon as the bay water temperatures started dropping, they started coming in, and then once it hit 68, they all started coming yeah. in. So, yeah. Unlike the manatees at Crystal River, the ones visiting here in Apollo Beach are in this channel solely for the warmth. There's no food in the canal for them, so they actually come in and sleep and hang out and play. And um, there's not, you know, other than that, it, it's just a safe haven for them. Now, what about feeding? Uh, where are they going to get the food? They can go outside of the canal. There's sea grasses and sea beds out along the um, all, all along the Bay Area. So there, again, there's no food here. So they go out and eat, and then they come back in. The viewing center has been open to the public for three decades and has hosted countless manatees in that time, as well as some other species looking to escape those chilly waters. Well, pretty much all of, of the animals in Tampa Bay, because your snook can get um, stunned with cold water, tarpon can get stunned by cold water. So a lot of the animals that are fish wildlife that you see come in here is because of the warmth. We can't help but notice that there is a research boat out there. Is that with the Florida Wildlife? Yes, ma'am. Um, they We do a lot of work with FWC. Right now what they're doing is actually uh, genetic sampling. Um, they have uh, where they actually get genetic sampling from each manatee that they can and study them that way. Um, now how do they get that? Um, it's a long pole and at the very end is like a real tiny brush-like needle that they can scrape the skin with and, and get samples that way. Um, they also do scar photography out here um, and we, they do um, manatee releases out here for rehabbed animals. So it's a, it's a great place to actually learn a lot about them. If any of the manatees come in and you perceive them to be sick or injured, what do you do? We have a hotline right to FWC. Um, the Florida Research Institute will come out and actually capture it, if, they, if at all possible. Um, they come out and look at it to make sure it's something that's worth bringing them in for, because if it's minor enough, they won't, they won't catch them because it'll upset them even more. But if it's something that the animal needs to be brought in for, they'll come out and capture it and take it into like Lowry Park or SeaWorld. You know, there's different locations that will tend to them. Now, they come in. They're here for the day, they're here for the night. What is, what is the routine? Here, they're basically here until the bay water temperature warms up out there. Um, once the bay water temperature starts hitting 70 or so, they'll, they'll start leaving us again. 
Um, they go out for short periods now just to get food and come back in. What do you think the allure is of a manatee? I think it's because it's, you, you can't just see them anywhere. Um, it's hard to, to get a good view of them, especially if you're not out in a boat in the summertime. They're such a gentle creature. They've lived forever. They have no natural enemy. Uh, it's just kind of amazing that something that gentle and that calm with no enemies has survived this long. And it's one of those things, they're just so ugly, they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> and cuddly. And cuddly looking. <laughs> Still ahead on animal outtakes, it's a family affair in the springs. Does the mom have to feed more to keep up with the babies? Generally speaking, yes. We find out just how awesome manatee moms are. Plus what you need to know if you ever come snorkel to snout with a manatee in the wild. Hi, I'm Marcia Panucci, founder of the Dante's Den Foundation. And I'm Ron Dixon, the executive director out at the Dens. Dante's Den has come a long way since its inception to where we are now. We've helped hundreds of dogs since we've opened, but now we need your help. We sure do, Marcia. Dante's Den needs great volunteers to help us feed, walk, and play with all of our furry friends. So come on out and enjoy our 50 acres of beautiful countryside where you can also feed miniature Holstein cows. And their babies. And Hee Haw. The donkey. And Buttercup. A beautiful miniature horse. If you would like to be a part of our joyful community of dogs, please visit dantesden.org. Or call us toll free at 844-DANTES-DEN. That's 844-366-8336. Come on out today and see what makes us so special. For thousands of years, we've been human's best friend. You've been through a lot and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. For me, it started with one hit of sardines. Oh, sardines. That's where I learned to bake. It was easy to score free fish. I mean, hey, with this dolphin smile, yeah, it's illegal, but hey, no one cares. I had a monkey on my back, but I was jonesing for people food, hanging out under boats, dodging props and hooks, and doing dangerous stuff, stuff that uh, I'm ashamed to admit. Look, I know that I can kick this if people would just stop feeding me. We see some foam on top of the water. I come from the Midwest. That's never a good sign. But is it a good sign here? Actually, it's not a good or bad sign. What happens is mostly usually at lower tide, um, the velocity of the water coming out of the discharge flumes um, mixed in with air and salt, is, it's an aeration process and it keep, creates foam. You can actually see foam along our shorelines at the beaches when it's you know coming in pretty heavily. So it's really kind of a, a normally it's a natural occurrence we're creating the occurrence by the velocity of the water coming out. So we have nothing to worry about. No. No, we're not putting detergent in to wash the manatees. <laughs> <laughs> we had a customer ask us that. It was like, no ma'am, we wouldn't do that. Back in the springs, it wasn't long before we realized that our manatee duo was actually a quartet. So now we saw four manatees mm -hmm. and two were very recognizable as a mother and a calf. In fact, what we were seeing was two calves and their mothers. Manatees are not prolific breeders. The females, or cows, don't reach maturity until they are five. Then they only reproduce once every two to three years. The males, or bulls, don't mature until they're nine or ten. The gestation period for a calf is 12 to 13 months. After they are born, calves depend on their mothers for sustenance for at least a year and up to two years. 
They nurse from the cow's teat, which is under her pectoral flippers. Now, nursing, they were they were nursing a lot. Are they getting any substance out of that? Or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, then, that's pure survival for the babies. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And that, does the mom have to feed more to keep up with the babies? To, to she, generally speaking, yes. Yeah. yeah, so during a real interesting thing is during extreme cold times, if we end up with an orphan calf, manatees are such a kind species. Another cow will take on another calf if it loses its cow. Huh. But if it's severe cold, right. she'll reject that orphan calf because huh. she knows she doesn't have enough resources to feed it. Nature just kicks in. Now, there are so many moms and babies in the area this time of the year. Those ones we saw today, yeah. one of them, the smallest one, that mom is not going to migrate. That baby's too young to make the journey. Mm. The other one that was nursing with mom that was larger, right. that one will probably migrate with mom this spring. And she'll learn the whole journey, where to go, where to eat, how to get back, and everything. Mm. But we have resident manatees, and that baby and mom will be one of our resident manatees. Scientists continue to study the manatee and are learning more and more about these gentle creatures. Snooty, the oldest living manatee in captivity, resides at the South Florida Museum in Bradenton, Florida. Born in captivity in 1948, researchers are keeping a close watch on this thousand-pound behemoth for clues into the species' life cycle. Since manatees have no natural enemies, their cause of death can be linked to a handful of reasons, most of which are linked to humans. Some of the most common are boat strikes, either by the hull or sharp propellers. Manatees can also get caught in fishing nets, hooks, or fishing line. There is also the threat of cold stress, as we talked about before, or other natural toxins in the water, like red tide. Cold stress can leave lesions on their bodies and can lead to pneumonia. That's why it's so important to have manatee sanctuaries where these animals can escape the cold weather and find a safe habitat with no threats from people or boats. Still ahead on Animal Outtakes. If you had to describe in one word what this experience was, what is it? We're back on the surface, reflecting on our manatee encounter and learning what you should know before approaching these creatures. For thousands of years, we've been humans' best friend. You've been through a lot and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org.
Manatees are gray in color, but sometimes appear brownish gray or even green. Because they move so slowly, algae sometimes grows on their backs. It's the perfect environment for these organisms, which like wet areas with a lot of sun exposure. Manatees don't seem to mind it so much. And I actually had noticed that one of them would, as it came up for air, the other one was grazing on its back. Is that normal? It is, it is. You'll even see the fish also doing that on the manatee's yeah. back. I don't know if you notice that while you're out there. Yep. The, the fish are eating the algae right. also. Sure. Absolutely. They're mm -hmm. pretty hungry come this time of year. We're getting late into the season. Okay. And they don't get to get those 10 hours a day out eating. Gotcha. Because the water temperature is too cold and they're mm -hmm. going to die of hypothermia. So anything green, whether it's algae, weeds, the minimal amount we saw right. under that old boat garage, yep. they're going to chew on it. Yeah. Doesn't yes. matter if it's on the mom's back or nope, not. Nope, <laughs> sure doesn't. Survival. Right. Mm -hmm. They're very lethargic animals, so to speak. They basically eat and sleep. The ones that might come check us out, juveniles and the babies. They're the ones with all the curiosity. So if you get one like right in your face and it's like chewing on you, you just take in that little... We've spent the day learning about manatees and getting a chance to see these animals up close in their natural habitat. The stillest, quietest people keep the manatees around them. It's that simple, okay? So once we get near a manatee, we stop and we look. We stay as still as we can. As much fun as it has been to encounter these gentle giants, it's important to note that they are a protected species. Crystal Springs is the only place in Florida where you are allowed to swim with the manatees. This is one of the very special places in the world where we can swim with the manatees. It's right here in Citrus County, here in the Crystal River, as well as home of Sassa Springs State Wildlife Park. That park has just one spring. We're the manatee capital of the world. Why? This is one of many springs we have. We have the most housing, so to speak. 72 degree water for these manatees to live in in the summertime. Second highest population is Blue Spring, but you can't swim with them. Manatees have been listed as endangered since 1972. However, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has proposed reclassifying the species to threatened. That's because there's been a boom in manatees in recent years, a 500% increase since 1991, according to the National Service. Where there was once less than 1,300 manatees in the wild, now there's well over 6,000. If the downgrade is approved, certain federal protections that have helped the manatee will not change. Those include things like habitat protection and boat speed limits. The reclassification would take effect in 2017. Manatees are also listed under the Marine Mammal Protection Act which states that it is illegal to harass, feed, capture, collect, or kill any marine mammal. For anyone who comes across a manatee outside a guided tour like this one, make sure to practice passive observation. Don't touch them. Don't surround them. Just watch and enjoy the experience. Just observe. It is totally against the law. To swim with a manatee in the wild unless it's out here. Ron, before we got onto this trip, you told me this was one of your bucket list items. Right. If you had to describe in one word what this experience was, what is it? I would say tranquil. Really? Yeah. It was, you know, I was a little unsure because there was a lot of lot going on, a lot of uh, a lot of people getting into the water. And but once you know you get yourself in the water and you get calmed down and everything quiets and settles and it was pretty cool. You guys got to feel that once the kids yeah. kind of exited the area, yeah. and just how beautiful it really can be. Yeah. You know, it was once we got down there and things sort of calmed down. It was really really neat just to be down there, just being quiet and having the manatees right beside you coming up and coming down. I guess that's what the whole attraction is. Oh, absolutely. It's just, that's why years ago the sailors thought they were mermaids because they're, if you notice how graceful and smooth they move yeah. through the water, it's effortless. It's just beautiful. It's a very calming effect. And that's why you as swimmers 
I tell you to remain calm yeah. and quiet. You want to be one with the manatee. Yeah. They give you the look, you know, <laughs> and then they, you know, they, and then they go back down. But it was cool. Yeah. Would you do it again? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> if it was a little warmer, <laughs> why not? <laughs> we'll be right back. If you would like more information about reserving your own manatee tour, visit riverventures.com. Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. That's it for this episode of Animal Outtakes. We hope you've enjoyed our time with the manatees and learned a little something about these amazing creatures. Join us again next week for another outstanding animal adventure. See you then. Hello and welcome to Animal Outtakes. Let me try that one again. <laughs> I think there was a in there. I it. You guys, Hello. you guys are brutal. That's it for another episode. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs>